Good morning, everyone. You're watching my real life vlogs. I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod today. All right, so I'm in my bathroom getting ready for the day, you guys. We are about to head out. It's gonna be kind of like a family day, spending some time with my dad, my dad's dad, my grandfather, and Anthony's grandmother. So we're gonna be heading over there to visit her. And today's video is sponsored by Pantene. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys kind of my little hairstyle routine really quick. And I'm gonna be showing you all some new products that I am trying out on my hair. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm gonna just remove my little turban. You guys, I love this turban. Okay, obviously. And my hair has been in this kind of, you know, twist out uh, kind of state as we move in between washes. So I washed my hair a few days ago. I'm thinking like four or five days ago. And you guys know I wash my hair every week. So I'm going to kind of share some products that I have acquired recently to kind of help me maintain, you know, conditioned hair, fresh looking hair, fresh smelling hair in between washes. So here are the products from Pantene that I'm gonna be trying out today, you guys. Something very different, something that I don't typically use on my hair very often, but you know, you gotta be open-minded. So today I'm using products from the Pantene Waterless Collection. This is the Pantene Never Tell Dry Shampoo Spray and the Pantene Misbehaving Dry Conditioner Mist. Each of these products serves their own purpose, however you feel like you need to use them. I think it's really important to read the instructions though on products like this because you might feel as though it's not working as it was promised, but that's probably because you weren't using it correctly. Today I'm gonna use the dry shampoo. With the dry shampoo, you really want to apply it in layers. So you want to lift the hair in sections and lightly spray it in that area. You do not wanna spray it directly on the scalp. You don't wanna spray it holding you know the can too closely to your hair. The times where I choose to use the dry shampoo is when I notice that my hair may be getting a little bit more oily than needed. Like if my scalp is starting to look a little unhealthy and built up with a lot of debris and product. My strands are a little limp, you know, not really holding the curl the way they should. This is going to help kind of plump it back up. And with this dry shampoo, it's so awesome because it is going to absorb all of that nastiness and you can choose to do it two ways. I believe you can brush out um, the hair afterwards because that's going to help remove everything that was not supposed to be there everything that was absorbed by the product essentially or you can fluff it out and that's what I'm going to be doing today because I don't want to brush my hair and lose my curl definition that I have but I do want to shake the hair at least and rub my scalp and get everything kind of loosened and away from my hair and just kind of shake it out so that's what I'm going to be doing today when using the conditioner mist this is a product where you want things to be left behind. That's the purpose of a conditioner. You want the good stuff to stay. So you want to make sure you shake the product and spray it onto your hair at a distance and definitely focus it towards the ends. You don't want to spray it on your scalp or anything like that because think about it, it is a conditioner. So you do want it to wake up those ends, make your hair look a little more alive, and in some cases add some body and shine. What I love about these products though, you guys, is that they do not conflict with any of my hair products. So you don't have to worry if you already have product in your hair from a previous hairstyle. It's not going to like counteract with those products. It blends in really well. So I really like that about this so you can feel free to use it at any point in your hair care routine in between washes because it's not going to like ruin your hairstyle. I like the conditioner mist because it really helps with frizz. You guys know that frizzy hair comes from hair that is losing moisture in the air. So adding this conditioner mist into the mix is going to put some moisture and nutrients back into your hair and cause that frizz to just be gone. I think in the past I didn't want to use dry shampoos or conditioners because I always felt like it would leave a white residue on my hair. And in this case, these products do not do that. And it's just a quick way to refresh your hair. The Pantene Never Tail Dry Shampoo Spray actually has pro vitamin B5 in it, while mint and tapioca from the cassava root it's sulfate free and paraben free. The Pantene Mist Behaving Dry Conditioning Mist is great for long hair that ends up a little tangled sometimes in between washes. Also color treated hair and heat styled hair, naturally frizz prone hair. This dry conditioner mist is as light as air you guys and it does hydrate um, and evenly distributes that hydration through the hair in little droplets. It's paraben free, sulfate free. It contains omega-9 which is the staple good fat of the Mediterranean diet and trusted skin hydrator. It penetrates into the hair's core to restore it with lipids. By filling hair with good stuff instead of humidity, it can resist frizz and stay smooth. Oh, so I'm all done fluffing and applying the dry shampoo spray and everything. I'm just kind of separating my curls a bit and kind of styling my hair. I mean, honestly, I would recommend doing this process after you've already taken your shower and everything and you're pretty much dressed and ready to go and then this is kind of like the final thing that you do just so that your hair doesn't, you know, have to 
deal with any humidity or anything after the fact. But I am really loving this, you guys. My hair has so much fullness, softness, and body. It honestly feels like clean hair, if I dare to say so. My hair honestly feels clean and it smells really nice. Every time I fluff it and move it, I just get a whiff of that really sweet smell from the dry shampoo, so I love it. And honestly, you know, living between hair wash days, I mean, this is our, you know, this is my life, living between hair wash days. I love being able to refresh my hair and have like a nice scent. So when I go around someone, I don't have to feel insecure that my hair is giving off this odor and smelling like day six hair. You know, I can kind of get away with it in between. So that's super awesome. And honestly, you guys, you know, these dry shampoo and conditioner products are not going to stop me from washing my hair every week. I'm still going to do that. This is just going to give me more confidence in between those washes. So I really like this, you guys. Definitely click the link in the description box if you're interested in either of these products and I'm getting ready to go and get dressed now and finish doing my makeup and all that and go ahead and get my day started. I'm not putting on any makeup today because I am just going to be wearing a mask so there's no need for me to have on makeup, getting it smeared all over the place, all that jazz. But I am just going to touch up my brows and my eyes. call this mask makeup <laughs> just focused on um, the under eye area and the lashes and brows You ready for mommy to do your hair? You look so cute with your little Jordans on, honey, with your little cut off shorts. You ready, boo boo? You ready? You wanna stomp around with your little sneakers? You wanna stomp around? Come on, let's go, let's do your hair. Come on, you ate all your snacks? Looking real sporty, Ian. Ann, where's your iPad? Where's her iPad? Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, off I go to grab all of the essentials that we need to leave, honey. So Ann had her breakfast and lunch. Me and Anthony did the same. So we are finally leaving out. You guys, look what I have on. Real comfy, like, you know. Y'all know how I do. My little flip-flops. Well, these ain't really flip-flops. They're more like slides, but yeah. Got my little red polish on and all that. By the time you guys see this vlog, you will have already seen my June favorites where I talk about this nail polish and all that. So, yeah, girl. Okay, her iPad. Let me get her water and her backpack. And I got her mask and all that. Y'all, taking these masks along with us when we go out and stuff like that, it is really a pain in the butt. One time I left without my mask, I had to turn around and come all the way back. I think Ann is gonna wear this N95 one. Okay, let me grab her backpack. And I got her raincoat in case it starts raining. Yeah, but there's no like guaranteed way to keep a mask on a little kid. It's just not. You just gotta get lucky. But I just feel like with this one, you know, cause it's harder. It'll stay away from her face instead of land right on her nose because she she has a um, she has an oral fixation with chewing and stuff so she chews on the mask girl so like this one that my cousin made I get the iPad always have to bring her headphones in case she plays with the iPad because sometimes depending on where we are everybody don't want to hear that <laughs> that you know that music and stuff put a raincoat in here. And we are good to go. Girl. <laughs> Why 
He's he talking about knock knock. Come on. He's talking about some knock knock. I was not vlogging I was not vlogging because it was just too it was too intimate you know we were talking about personal family stuff and everything so I didn't vlog a whole lot good morning you guys so it's the next day I've been vlogging so terribly my bad I need to get back in the groove you know it's been three weeks since I picked up a camera and filmed myself so I gotta get back into the groove but anyway um, I'm all sweaty and gross and you know, whatever, because I just went for a three mile run. I feel so good about it though, you guys, because I like my three mile runs to be under 30 minutes and I did that today, so I'm really excited about it. Um, I dropped Ann off at therapy. I think I mentioned, well maybe I didn't. Ann is back in therapy. <laughs> She's pretty much there all day, kind of like regular school hours. So that gives me a lot of time to kind of work and clean and do my thing here at the house while she's gone. And she's been doing really good with the transition back into therapy, you guys. It's almost as though if she could tell me, she would have been like, Mom, I miss this, you know. Um, but she's been doing really, really good. All of her problem behaviors have been to a minimum. And I probably need to give you guys um, another autism mom update at this point because there are some changes and things like that to her behavior and her whole situation. So we'll be working on that really soon. You guys, I have like five videos that I have already filmed Half of them are already edited. They're just kind of sitting in the editor. Some of them are already sitting on YouTube, just in, you know, unlisted private mode, waiting to share them according to my schedule. So you guys will see a bunch of um, videos going live really soon. Um, but today is the day that we are breaking ground, quite literally, um, for Anne's playground in the backyard. I had mentioned it in a previous vlog, just kind of really quick, saying that we were creating a little play area for her back here. It's going to be a little playground just for her. So the landscaper is here and he's getting started on that thing and here's the thing about putting the playground back here you guys we actually live down the street from a playground like literally like it's not even a whole block away and it's a really nice playground but it's two two reasons that I feel like we still needed one in our backyard so before I was saying like oh we don't need one it's a waste of money we can just literally walk down the street and you know she can play in that one but here's the deal when we're kicking it back here like in the patio and stuff if Ann doesn't have something to do She's all up in the video, you know, and and even like when we bring her toys and stuff out, it's just not enough for her. So I figured like, listen, if we had this playground over here, we can just be like, and go over there. <laughs> and it'll also be really great when her friends and stuff come visit. So that's why we ultimately decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on the playground. And then the other part to it, you guys, is that <sighs> You guys know I have anxiety even when I take her to the park, especially if there's a whole bunch of kids there because they don't understand her condition. And you know, I feel like a lot of times they're just running circles around her and I don't want her to get hurt. And sometimes she needs and wants to explore the park a little bit and she kind of takes her time getting to know the different activities and stuff like that. Like it took her so long to even start to understand and enjoy the slide so i figure if we had our own in a private area in our yard she could explore at her own pace you guys that was ultimately the straw that broke the camel's back on making this decision so our landscaper is here and he's doing all the measuring and you know carving out the grass where we need the thing to be built they're not actually coming to build the play unit uh, for another couple of weeks because of the pandemic and all that so they everything had to get pushed back but we needed the ground to be level so that's what our landscaper is doing and he's also putting down mulch covering the weed blocker thing so that they can put the mulch on top but this is how it goes you have to you have to carve out the grass first you have to um, level the foundation then you lay down you know the mulch uh, blocker weed blocker um, fabric thing then they go ahead and put the border around it because you got to have the brick border or whatever timber lumber whatever it is that you use to border off that mulch so it doesn't spill over into your lawn and then they have to build the unit and then the landscapers come back and lay the mulch down because the mulch has to kind of build up around the legs of the play unit so it's this whole back and forth process all these moving 
moving parts, you guys. It's kind of a fool, but we're doing it. We want to do it right. We don't want any bootleg. We don't want to try to DIY because we don't really know what we're doing. Um, so we letting the professionals just sort of do it. And I'm really excited about it. So I will obviously be sharing this entire process with you all, not just for educational purposes, because I'm sure some people out there are like, hmm, I never knew that that's how you got a playground built in your yard. So it'll be for educational purposes for sure. But also I just really want to share this happy moment because we're so excited, you guys. We are beside ourselves as though we're going to be playing on this thing. <laughs> I didn't grow up with a playground in my backyard, and neither did my husband, so this is all really new for us, but we're really happy to have this for Anne and all of her cousins and stuff, and I will share all of that once we get the thing in here. But yeah, everything should be up in a couple weeks, so just give me a couple vlogs and you guys will be seeing the finished product.